the sacrifices they offered in the temple. It was straight, killing the animal and then putting on the altar of burnt offering. Jesus went through scourging. It wasn't a mistake on the part of Pilate. It was a sovereign will of God. As sure as that stripe fell on his back, just as sure your cancer died. Amen. That disease has lost its hold over you. Amen. 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 People are being healed even right now in Jesus' name. Thank Amen. you, Lord.
felt like, if only I can take that virus, if only I can take that fever. That's how a father feels. If only I can take. In fact, one time I was thinking these kind of thoughts and God, God interrupted and God said, son, that's how I feel about you and about her. You f- only love will want to take the suffering of another. Amen. You pass by, you see someone else's kid and all that crying, you don't care. You don't care that much. But when it's your own, God says, that's how I feel about you and your child. And in fact, the Lord said, I took your diseases and I took your child's diseases. Now it's no more trying to believe. Hey, he's done it. I just thank God for it. Don't worry about the manifestation. When it will come, just thank God. He's healed. You see, you got to believe that God wants you well. But please don't penalize the church for believing this. Amen? I love you people. That's why I'm preaching this. Amen? Well, well, what about Paul? Yeah, what about Paul? Paul, Paul? Paul died as a martyr. Okay, since you brought Paul up. Okay, Philippians 1. Philippians 1. Paul says this, okay? Tell me whether you can say this. Paul says this. I am hard-pressed between the two, two decisions. Having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh, in the body, is more needful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain in the body that is and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith. So imagine a guy talking to you like this, okay? Hey guys, guys, I, I, I'm in a dilemma. There, there are two roads. I, I, I got to choose one of them. I have a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. He loves the Lord. But for me to stay in the body is more needful for you. So you know what? For your joy of faith and progress, I think I'll hang around in my body for a while. (laughs) Can anyone say that today? Obviously, he knows something that we need to learn. I mean, some people say, you know, I I think I'll stay around the body. They, They have no choice. When disease strikes, so obviously he has a he has power, and this power is not from him; it's from God. He has power to put death at bay. The rapture generation is a generation that will be alive, not just alive. Those of us who are alive and remain, that denotes power. It's one thing to be alive because you are young. It's one thing to be alive because you are ten years old or twenty years old. It's one thing to be alive, but it's nothing to remain. Remain denotes power. There'll be a revelation in the end time generation that will cause them to keep death at bay. The last enemy that will be put under our feet is death. Physical death. We are not, we're not going to overcome spiritual death because we have overcome already spiritual death. When you're born again, we'll never die spiritually. Amen. But, but physical death is the last enemy. God calls it the last enemy. Amen. So there'll be a revelation coming to the church. And I think it's happening. We've preachers that dare preach the message. So I understand our loved ones passed on, but you know what? Those loved ones, like my child and all that, they're in heaven, they're happy. They're very happy. If you can say it's the best form of healing for them. They are, they, are, they are crying for us. There are no tears in heaven, Pastor. Initially, there are tears in heaven. Even Eric Clapton say that. <laughs> Eric chapter 3, verse 19. For God to wipe away their tears, that means there were initially tears, right? I believe the tears were not so much like, oh, I miss my... No, no. Tears are like, I didn't know you were this good. I didn't know that you wanted me to live the kind of life. I didn't know the truth. I didn't know you, 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 you were looking at my need instead of my sins. I, I didn't know how good you were, Lord. I didn't know you had so much for me and I, and I, and I settled for so few. I didn't know, Lord. And then you'll cry. Then he'll say, son, you're home. Doesn't matter anymore. You're home. Amen? Praise the Lord. So how can we tap into this? How can we? So Paul, finally, when Paul, Paul was martyred, because you know why? His body is so full of resurrection life that every disease germ that touches him, I believe, dies. So we got to learn to walk there. We're not there yet, but we got to learn to walk in there, right? I'm sure Paul, Paul walked in there, right? So the fastest way for Paul to die is like this. Let me die glorifying Jesus. Amen? He was decapitated, we were told. 
under Emperor Nero. So probably he was, before he did that, he looked at the, the executioner. The guy's face is hooded maybe, and he maybe winked at him and said, remember, no, don't feel guilty after this. All right, because Jesus loves you and I love you. And he's waiting for you. Just invite him into your life. Amen? That's a way to glorify Jesus. Because for him to wait for old age, he loves the Lord too much. He told us he has a desire to depart and be with Christ. For him to die of disease, I think he's so full of resurrection life that ministers life to his mortal body. Amen? He, he's learned all the revelations. That's why we're going to study the revelations of Paul. All the Bible is important. Every Bible word is inspired. But not everything is written to the church. Some are written for the benefit of the church. We can learn. Some things are written to Israel. We got to learn. We can benefit from it, from it because all the promises of God, not just for Israel, all the promises of God in Christ is yes and in Him, amen. amen. When Paul finally came to the, the place of offering, he says, you know, I'm poured out already my whole life. And this is what Paul says in first, 2 Timothy 4, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. In other words, there's nothing else left. The fastest way back to the Lord is in a way that glorifies the Lord through my death as a martyr. You see that? Even martyrdom, Hebrews 11, I'll, I'll close, uh, I'm bringing this to a close. Hebrews 11 says, uh, by faith, there were men of God in the Old Testament, uh, in the New Testament that quenched the violence of fire, escaped the age of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured. This part, a lot of people don't like to hear, but there were those who were tortured, martyrdom. But this is the word that, that I was reading this one day that these words grabbed me like an octopus tentacles, grabbed me and said, listen. And I was, these three words, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And you know something? A lot of people try to misconstrue this by saying, well, they were offered deliverance by their captors, by the Romans. The Romans says, you know, you want to uh, renounce Jesus? Then you'll be delivered. But listen, the word deliverance here is the word apolutrosis. It is used 10 times in the New Testament. Every time it is used, it is always about redemption from God. It is always redemption from God, not from men. For example, the verse Ephesians 1, in whom we have redemption through His blood. That's apolotrosis. Redemption or deliverance is always from God. They didn't accept deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. The choice was theirs. Have you noticed that? This is in the Bible. Let's not talk about Fox Book of Martyrs and all that. That's not Bible. Okay, it's a great book, but it's not Bible. This is Bible. Not accepting deliverance. For them not to accept, that means what? They had a choice. And this deliverance is deliverance always used. Ten times is used. All the ten times is used as from God. Always from God. You check it out. It's all from God. It's never used of deliverance from men. It's the word redemption. Christ is made unto us apolotrosis. Redemption or deliverance. Amen. So how can we receive this? I'll tell you what's the problem. Number one problem. Number one problem in the church is this. I'll, I'll close by telling you how we can receive, right? I need to tell you how. It's not, not nice teasing you and all that. Okay, number one way, Romans 4. Look at Romans 4 verse 13. For the promise that Abraham will be the heir of the world. Stop. What's heir of the world? God promised Abraham he'd be the heir of the world. So if he's going to be the heir of the world, can you be the heir of the world and you are always sick? You can't, right? You cannot, right? What about if you're always poor and broke? Can you be the heir of the world? No. You can't, right? So all the other lesser blessings are in this promised heir of the world. So the promise that Abraham will be the heir of the world, you can name any blessing. It is all in this heir of the world. The promise that Abraham with the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed. Don't forget, if you are Christ, you are Abraham's seed. Galatians tells us that. What are you? Abraham's seed. 
So the promise that he'll be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now we come back to the first two illustrations that Jesus used in Nazareth. Why can't Israel receive? They were too busy looking at their obedience. They were too busy looking at the law. They were trying to obtain by deserving healing, by deserving, whereas the Gentiles, they deserve nothing, they know that. And the moment they look at the Saviour, they were justified by faith, like Rahab. Here it says very clearly, the promise was not through the law. You know what it means? We are looking at, now listen carefully, here's where a lot of people will try to misquote me. Doesn't mean it's a miss or a mister. But they like to misquote me. <laughs> Pastor, you're so corny. Yeah, I know Joseph sells corns, yeah. <clears throat> the Bible tells us obedience is important. But we have a new obedience called obedience of faith. The Bible talks about who should hinder you that you should not obey the truth. What is obey the truth? Um, the Bible says about the gospel preaching is the gospel preaching for the obedience of faith. What is obedience of faith? The obedience today is right believing. Right believing will produce right living. Obeying the truth, obedience of faith, is all about right living. No? Sorry, believing. Right? That produces right living. Am I right? But the church preaches right living, right living, right living. That's the law. That's the principle of the law. If I keep the law and I live right, God will bless me. Right? Wrong. Because the moment you come under law, all right, you come under the curse. It goes on to say, for if those who are of the law are heirs, in other words, if you say, I, I've obeyed enough, now God has to give me the healing, now I've obeyed enough, God has to give me the provision, then faith is made void. And the promise that He'll be the heir of the world is made of no effect. Wow, wow. you ask the church today, uh, an average person, you put a mic under their nose and you tell them, what, what, what voids healing in the church? What voids provision in the church? Sin, man, sin! Bless God. If there's less sin in the church, more people will be healed. It's very funny, isn't it? A lot of people that receive healing, all who touched Jesus, all who came to Jesus were healed and they were all sinners. And they all received. If sin can stop God's grace, it will never have begun right? Because what we see is God's grace going everywhere and healing. And sin cannot stop it. Grace is greater than sin. Have you, do you realize that nobody was born again when Jesus healed them in the Gospels? Nobody was saved. They were Israelis as well as some Gentiles, but they were not saved. How can they be saved? Jesus has not yet died and risen again. So basically, if, if sinners can receive, you are God's children, you know. Hello. You are God's children. Like my son looked at a chicken one time when he was four years old. Hey, chicken. Hey, hey, yeah, hey, chicken. I'm talking to you. Hey, hey, guys. You are God's children. Hey, hey, I'm talking to you. The chicken never answered him. And I told him, Justin, that's what happens when, when you don't answer back. You know, when someone greets you and you don't look at them and answer, that's how you feel. And now you feel it, right? Hey, chicken. Hey, 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 chicken. I'm talking to you, chicken. <laughs> he loves to watch Foghorn Leghorn. I say, I, say, I say, boy, you know, he loves that. Never mind, it's a cartoon. Foghorn Leghorn, check it out. Anyway. <laughs> what is the righteousness of faith? In other words, the way you receive is like this. Keep on confessing, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Christ was made sin with my sin on the cross that I might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Can I have a good amen? amen. Confess, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Christ. Say it again. I See, the more you say it, the more you confess it, guess what's going to happen? You will inherit effortlessly. Amen. But the other way is this, all right? No, no, I, I cannot say that because I've not done this. Oh, I've done that wrong. I've done that wrong. You don't, you, you don't know what I've done in my life. And you know what is going to happen? 
you will disqualify yourself. Not that God disqualify you, but when you say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, that's how the promise will be made effective. Israel today has possession of their land. They even possess, technically speaking, the Temple Mount, where the temple is to be built, right, is theirs after the 1967 war, the Six-Day War. Yet, it is not theirs. It is theirs, but it's not theirs. It's like, it's their land, like Joshua, yet it's not possessed. You know, they can never possess effectively their land without trouble. Now they have trouble, all kinds of trouble, Syria from north, Iran, you know, from the east and all that. And, and, and they will always have trouble, always have trouble because they are steep in the law. The promise to Abraham was not through the law and they are trying to get it through the law. And now the church is trying to get it through the law. All the blessings of God. But the day that Israel says, Baruch haba b'hashem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Bang! All the pro- They are righteous by faith. They will possess their possessions. The land will truly be theirs. Can I have a good amen, church? Come on! Give Jesus the praise. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So, Go out of here confessing, I'm the, I don't care what you need, just keep on confessing, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm the right. So the devil's number one, number one weapon will be what? To accuse you, to accuse you. No wonder he's the accuser of the brethren. He will try to stop you from realizing that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Or if you know it already, deep down in your, he will try to make you believe it in your head only and not in your heart. And that's why it's not enough to hear one sermon about righteousness of faith. You need to keep on hearing, keep on hearing, keep on hearing. Because righteousness of faith. And faith needs to be fed. The Word of God. You need to keep on hearing. Amen? Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Give Jesus the praise. (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed all across this place. Everywhere that's watching this right now, we love you. We love you. Even if you're a friend, a visitor visiting, let me tell you this, I don't believe for one moment that you came here by happenstance or by by chance. I believe, I really believe that God directed your steps here today. You might just feel like coming or a friend invited you, but it is God orchestrating everything. He loves you, my friend. The Bible says, there is no other name under heaven whereby we can be saved or we must be saved by the name of Jesus. The Word of God says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Right believing to God is everything. Right believing is the holiest thing you can ever do towards God. Today, it's not about keeping the law. Today, it's about right believing. When there's right believing, there will be right living. Believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Believe He rose from the dead for your justification. He's alive today at the Father's right hand. I preach the glorified risen Christ to you. And I'm saying that He wants to be your shepherd. He wants to be your Lord. He wants to be your protector. He wants to be your provider. He wants to be your healer. He wants to be your everything. Will you allow Him? Pray this prayer with me right now. If you want Jesus to come into your life, Say this from your heart. Say, Heavenly Father, what a wonderful gift. My Lord Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead without my sins. I thank you that today, as you see Him, that's how you see me. I am in Him. I am the righteousness of God in Christ because Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Father. I'm greatly blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Stand to your feet right now. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands all across this place. One of the provisions that God gives us is protection. And Psalms 91 is all about protection. If God does not want us to be protected, then He would not have given us such a beautiful psalm in Psalms 91. So lift your hands all across this place, friend. God wants you protected. And this world is going crazy. You can see all kinds of crazy things happening. Even flying is not safe. 
or going to certain places is not safe. You never know one disaster or natural disasters or crazy terrorists or whatever. The thing is that God wants you protected. Lift up your hands. Everybody that's watching this right now, the Lord bless you with the blessings of Father Abraham. Receive it in Jesus' name. And the Lord keep you. The Lord preserve you. The Lord protect you throughout this entire week. You and your families from every harm, danger, accident, tragedy, from every sickness, from every infection, from all the powers of darkness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord grant you favor, great favor. Everywhere you go, you'll be at the right place at the right time, you and yours. And the Lord grant you great favor with everyone that you meet. And those that you don't have favor with were never meant to be. You don't need them. The Lord grant you and your loved ones shalom, health, peace, and well-being. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you again. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen.